Hello. We now come to the final section of my summary of Berger's uh, third chapter in his heretical imperative, Reflecting on Thunder. So the book uh, comes out in, came out in 79 and is subtitled Contemporary Possibilities of Religious Affirmation. And this is the first of those three possibilities, deductivism in Berger's terms. So the deductive possibility is one in which tradition is reaffirmed. We've already covered the first three sections and now we'll, we'll finish with the last one, Reflecting on Thunder. The neo-orthodox model tends to be anti-empirical and anti-inductive. It often denies that its reflection about religion is based on specific experience, as in the case of Bart, a position critiqued above by Berger in asking what kind of experience underlies it. But rejecting uh, the neo-orthodox model, as Berger does, does not mean that we have to deny its practical and experiential foundation. The neo-orthodox leap of faith can be based on a genuine religious experience and thus express a valid insight. Monsieur Eliade speaks of hierophanies, the manifestations of the sacred, that are the great turning points in religious history. These are human experiences, so in principle understandable. No human experience is irrevocably alien, so a modern individual can seek to understand the experience of the Rig Veda, Isaiah, the prophet, or the religion of some tribal culture. Any hierophany involves the breaking in of another reality into ordinary human life. The manner of this breaking in varies between cultures and religious traditions. And in Western Asia, the cultural tradition is one of prophetic revelation. By contrast, in India, it is persuasive rather than proclamatory and therefore less dogmatic. Every hierophany is like a thunder that blots out every other sound in the universe and is therefore taken as self-evidently true. But the moment of revelation passes, even for those who have experienced it, and they must then reflect on what they have experienced. This reflection in the cold daylight of the morning after. The common enlightenment reductionism of religious experience is invalid. The religious experience should be taken seriously, but the religious experience does not occur in isolation nor must the statements of those who have experienced it be taken as the only valid interpretation. The hierophanic experience is a state of intoxication with the divine and may lead to the extravagant statements of the mystics, for example, Al-Ghazali, who made mysticism acceptable in Islam and referred to the mystics who had become drunk with the drunkenness in which their reason collapsed. But when their drunkenness abates and reason is restored, then reason is God's scale on earth. All human theorizing is grounded in experience, including the neo-orthodox model. The neo-orthodox experience is of the renewed power of a particular tradition that embodies some former hierophany. It is not the experience of renewed hierophany itself. This is not to belittle its power. Neo-orthodoxy can impact ordinary people just as much as intellectuals, as with the impact of Bartian ideas uh, to, on ordinary Protestants in Germany in the 1930s. Neo-orthodoxy is the experience of returning to the vitality of a tradition or a reawakening of that vitality. Individual lives can be dramatically transformed thereby, as are ideas and theories. Many people in many traditions experience this homecoming. It's not something confined to Christianity and invariably feel the need to identify with the community that embodies that tradition. Because the reconversion is recent and ipso facto fragile, this communal identification tends to be very intense. Thus, neo-orthodoxy typically emphasizes strong communal ties. In sociological terms, it inclines towards sectarianism. For example, with Barth, his turning away from his earlier individualistic existentialism to an emphasis 
on the community of faith, that's his book, Church Dogmatics. Sociologically, every conversion is fragile. So converts huddle together for mutual support against an outside world that fails to understand. The sect is a social form of huddling. Through the reconversion experience, the authority of the tradition is regained. It becomes subjectively real again, and so perceived as objective reality. The experience is so strong that they are impelled to absolutize it, both in terms of communal identification and in intellectual terms. There is a strong contrast with religious liberalism. Liberals, for, for liberals, religion, their religion seems lukewarm by comparison. The individual who proclaims the apodictic truth, the clearly established truth, the idea that truth is beyond dispute, has a psychological advantage over the liberal who seeks a balanced view. They may lose intellectual rigor thereby, but they're faithful to their own experience. The experiences of having leaving having left a tradition in which one once felt at home and then of returning to it must both be taken seriously and neither should be repudiated but neither should be absolutized either each is an experience amongst others part of the realm of human possibilities if an experience touched truth then truth will reassert itself over and again no matter how many sobering questions we ask of it religious truth has nothing to fear from reason. So many thanks for listening and particular thanks to my patrons, Sina Farzell, David Langness, Anthony Lee, Ian Palin, Johannes Rosenbaum, Steve Scholl, Ismail Valesco, Tobias Weta, Tricia Williams, Jonah Winters and Gloria Gastani. Uh, you're very welcome to support my channel, like, comment and share if you will. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'll give links to my Patreon and PayPal accounts below if you want to offer practical support and next week we'll talk about the reductive possibility the second of Berger's uh, three possibilities. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>